Hello, and welcome to an introduction to the Octogram, a test for identifying and measuring a candidate's work and leadership styles. My name is Richard, and I am the Chief Systems Developer for Online Talent Manager, a psychological test distributor based in the Netherlands, and the developer of this test. The Octogram test was developed by Andre Choa and Bert Hoes to identify the personality traits that underpin Quinn's competing values framework. It is used for selection, uh, matching how you like to work with the requirements of a particular position. It's used in training situations to help coworkers recognize and understand how and why their teammates do the things they do. And it's used in consultancy situations to identify the strengths and weaknesses of an organization. Before I go into the eight styles, I want to take a moment to say that the results of this test do not say whether or not you are capable of doing a particular job but it will tell you how much you will have to stretch or change or spend energy to do that work. You can work against yourself, but it's going to cost you effort to do so. Scores in the Octogram and in all of OTM's tests are displayed in something called the Stan 9 scale. It's a handy way of describing how your scores compare with those of a group. When you look at large groups of candidates' scores uh, and graph them out, they're distributed as a bell curve. Most people score around the average middle point, with fewer and fewer people scoring at the outlying extremes. A score of 5 is normal, and fully 20% of the population will have that score. And it generally indicates that you can perform the task in that trait competently. As you move away from the middle, toward a 1 or a 9, your behavior becomes more and more different from, well, normal. A score of 1 means that you should avoid the positions that require you to perform that described trait, and a score of 9 means that you can perform those activities easily, but you have to watch out that you don't get locked into that behavior so strongly that you cannot be flexible when the situation demands. The octogram graphic is something psychologists call a circumplex. It's, uh, that means that the traits that are close to each other tend to be similar, and traits on opposite sides tend to be different. As a quick example, it's, uh, it's rare to find someone who's a team player and a competitive achiever at the same time. It's not impossible, just very rare. So keep that in mind as we dig into these traits in more detail and learn about how they relate to each other. Let's start off with the pioneer. The pioneer trait is related to a candidate's need for new, uh, their need for change and variety in their work environment. You need pioneers if the position requires innovation and the generation of new ideas. A weak pioneer will be comfortable in a job that is very stable and unchanging. A strong pioneer can make intuitive leaps. They're creative and they're innovative. And if you go too far out there, if you get in the 8 or 9 range, a very strong pioneer, um, that candidate has trouble finishing a project before getting bored with it and wanting to move on to the next new thing. So that's something that very strong pioneers have to, have to wrestle with themselves on. The networker trait is related to how easily a candidate connects with strangers, how much they enjoy making new connections and learning about other people. A candidate with a low networker score has to overcome some internal resistance to reach out to strangers or people outside the team. A strong networker is enthusiastic and engaging, and they're the center of attention. They need to be in an environment that requires a lot of contact with new people in social situations. In the lower right-hand quadrant, we start off with the achiever. The achiever trade is a look into a candidate's energy level. Uh, their ability to deal with stress and achieve goals. You need achievers in positions that require high productivity, pushiness, and someone who doesn't take no for an answer. Uh, if the position requires patience and a relaxed style, look for a candidate with a low achiever score. But understand that they don't react well to stressful situations. A strong achiever feels the need to be competitive, to win. They're in a hurry. And if this trait is very high, it shows that the candidate has no problem stepping over the bodies and emotions of others to reach their goals. Where the achiever is the doer, the strategist scale is looking at thinking. It's a measure of how far a candidate's horizon is. You need the scale to see the big picture, uh, plan ahead, set goals. A weak strategist is more concerned with immediate needs and short-term goals. Uh, these are the people you want executing strategy. You don't want them constantly stopping to ask, hmm, what does this all really mean? A strong strategist is excellent at putting things into context and setting long-term goals. Very strong strategists have trouble seeing or dealing with situations in the here and now. In the lower left-hand quadrant, we start off with the anchor trait. 
The anchor trait is a measure of how much a candidate enjoys order and systems and rules and detail. You need workers who are good anchors to make sure things are 100% complete, to move it out of beta. They enjoy bringing structure and order to situations and make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Uh, a candidate with a low anchor score should avoid work that requires long-term focus and dealing with details, especially when it comes to numbers. An accountant is someone with a high anchor score. Strong anchors can focus sharply on complicated and exacting tasks. Uh, and a very strong anchor will have trouble completing things on time because they're working continually to make it absolutely perfect before it's complete. The analyst trait is looking at a candidate's need to deal with reality and hard facts. Uh, you need someone with this trait to look at problems from different angles, to identify potential pitfalls, and to be the voice of reason. Uh, candidates with a low score here do not look at things critically. They don't focus on what could go wrong. They're very optimistic and they can take risks, but they also tend to ignore facts that they don't like. A strong analyst is focused on data and information, but this constant need to know everything before making a decision can cause them to delay and delay while that information is being collected. This can be a problem in situations that require quick action and intuition. The team player is a measure of how well a candidate can play with others. Uh, can they maintain warm relations with other team members? Can they put their self-interest behind the needs of the group? This scale and the networker scale are both social traits, except where the no networker is dealing with strangers on the outside, the team player trait is talking about communication with coworkers. Strong team players are loyal, and uh, they act as a social glue in the group. And, and they're always looking for win-win scenarios. A very strong team player is going to have trouble being critical of other people or forming independent uh, opinions. They, they, don't really, they have a real tough time standing up for themselves because they avoid confrontations at all costs. Where the team player trait is looking at interactions in a group, the helper trait is measuring how well a candidate interacts on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Because they have a lot of empathy and caring, you need someone with this trait to act as a coach or mentor or counselor and they take the time to get to know you as an individual. A weak helper will be able to make business decisions that negatively impact on other people. A strong helper is, is good at listening, advising, understanding how other people feel. A candidate with a very high helper score will have difficulty in making decisions that hurt others. They have difficulty getting the word no out of their mouths. In the Competing Values Framework, we see that an effective team and organization must perform all of these activities competently. The Autogram is a way of making these work styles visible, measurable, and understandable. And you can use this model to describe any function in, in an organization. And it is an excellent way to place employees in positions that use their skills most productively. If you haven't already done so, contact Online Talent Manager to take the Autogram test and see your own report. It could be a real eye-opener, especially if you've been struggling with some aspects of your own career or are trying to decide where your career should be heading. Please subscribe to this channel to learn more about the tests of Online Talent Manager and about psychometric testing in the workplace. Thank you for listening.